49% of small business owners are making less than the average weekly wage. Now that's not a great thing. And look, it's not an isolated statistic. If you're a business owner and you're earning less than what you could get as an average wage employee, it's not a great thing. So we need to address that. Um, is this the only statistic pointing to the fact that small business owners are having a tough time? Well, no, it's not. Because um, according to the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman, we've got two out of five micro small companies, uh, that's 43% of them, are not actually profitable. That's a lot of businesses that are not making profits at the moment. And that's the lowest proportion in Australia since 20, so 2013. So 10, in 10 years, that's the lowest proportion of small, medium businesses that are actually making profits. And um, the, uh, another damning statistic at the moment is how stretched small and medium business owners are, is that 45% are working more than 39 hours a week. So they're working more than the ordinary number of hours for an employee and they're taking home a lot less. So that's not good. So we need to deal with that. And look, there are issues around um, that we're facing still, small business. Um, we've got a third of employee, um, a third of employing businesses struggling to find staff at the moment still. So that's still ongoing issues. And we have been told from the Australian Bureau of Statistics that you know, nearly half of businesses are still experiencing increases in operating expenses and um, supply chain issues. So there, there's some big issues going on. So why are we talking about all these um, scary statistics uh, that are pointing to some pretty bad situations, outcomes for small, medium business owners? Well, yeah. Where I'm recording at the moment, it's Small Business Month in New South Wales, and there's a focus on addressing the health of business owners, addressing the health of their businesses, and how do we actually revitalize those businesses. So uh, we've been looking at this whole thing in Small Business Month because we've been pre presenting workshops and, and talking to business owners about this. So... Uh, welcome back to the Business Behind Your Business podcast. I'm your host, Paul Sweeney. So I am a chartered accountant and a business advisor. So I work closely with uh, many of these small business owners, um, many of these business owners who are struggling at the moment. But at the same time, there are also a lot of businesses out there who are thriving. They are making more profit now than they have uh, since inception. They're making more profit. They're growing their business sustainably growing their business profitably. They've identified new markets, new opportunities, but they're growing. So why are we having so many businesses that are still struggling when we've got these businesses that are thriving? Is it just particular industries? And look, my observation from talking with my accounting clients and from talking with other advisors and professionals in, in business networks is that it is not specific industries alone that are growing. It's not specific industries um, where every business is suffering. Obviously, still um, hospitality retailer are, are still struggling to get back on their feet after the, the events of the last couple of years. But within the same industry, we are seeing businesses thriving and businesses struggling. Now, I have a, a, a client in a particular industry who has um, grown dramatically in these past couple of years. And, and part of it is, though, he has taken advantage to increase his labor force, his, his key employees, and he's done that at, at opportuni opportunistically um, at, the, at, the, at the cost of somebody else who, well, not, at, not directly at their cost. The cost was already borne by them. That they, Their cost was so big that they actually decided to close their business, which meant that their key employees, their best employees were available for other employment. So uh, my client actually engaged these employees to take on and uh, use that extra capacity to grow his business at a time when other businesses were contracting. And he's doing very, very well at the moment and uh, some big plans for how to grow the business even more in the next 12 months. So there's lots of theories existing as to why some of these businesses are thriving and why a lot have um not not um, been successful or are really struggling still at this time. And some of the key things that I've observed with the businesses that are doing really well is that when things have been 
tough or when things um, you know, aren't going quite so well, they've actually done a few things. And, and some of the things that they've done is they've actually had a plan to act on how to address the issues in their business and how they were going to grow out of those adverse circumstances during the hard times. They had a plan. They looked for what are the opportunities that are here in this in this situation. Like we've seen some pretty unfavorable um, situations, but at the same time, businesses have grown. They've they thrived. They've taken advantage of opportunities and grown. And look, that's involved taking some risks. And, you know, capturing those opportunities always in, seems to involve some risk. But where are you prepared to uh, take that risk? But if you know um, your your capacity for for risk your risk appetite and and how much it's it could potentially cost you if it doesn't work um then then that's a good point to go from and look sometimes it's meant that you had to adopt new skills new learnings to actually uh, or new processes to to grow, take the advantage of those opportunities and and these businesses are business owners that are thriving at the moment have taken that action now it's not too late it's not too late and look the other thing I will say is that these guys didn't just act alone. They actually had close contact with their advisors. It wasn't a case of they've, they've been silent for, for months, years, and then suddenly got advice. They've been actively involved getting advice on a regular basis um, and constantly refining their plan. So these are the guys that are really thriving, but that's not the case for most businesses at the moment. So why are we focusing on this because we want to have a successful business and some of the key indicators are that well, firstly these businesses that are successful are making good profits I mean that's that's one of the outcomes that we're looking for as a business owner is to make profit they've got their HR their employment sorted they've got that under control because a lot of businesses are still struggling to find employees so these businesses have got that HR resourcing, yeah, they've got that under control. They've identified who they need and when they're going to hire and you know what resources they're going to need for the future growth and what are the key people. And they've they've been on that. They've been um, working constantly on their HR strategy. Um, so they've got the resources. They're not overspending though. They're not overspending on um, you know uh, marketing or being excessive or overstocking. Um, they've got very good financial management in place. They understand their financial position. They're monitoring that closely. They've got good marketing plans where they need to grow their business by, you know, by creating new sales opportunities. They've got that process in place. They know what works for them and they're not overcomplicating it. It's a simple process. And they know exactly where they're at. They can tell you where they are on the journey. They can tell you what the journey is going to look like and where they're heading and where they are exactly, because they've got their financial numbers up to date, they've got their marketing figures up to date, they've got their sales conversions, they know all this information, and they can tell you what needs to be fixed. Okay, they're working really hard on their business. And look, that is a big contrast to a lot of the business owners we're seeing that are struggling with their business, the ones that are having the unhealthy business at the moment. And so the unhealthy business is really a case of um, well, there's a lot of symptoms of the unhealthy business, but what we're seeing is that, that having that unhealthy business has a lot of implications on you, the business owner. Okay, the, if your business is not healthy, that does cause a lot of issues, and a lot of that those those issues come from a disconnect between that business that you want, that ideal business, what your business is going to be look like, how much profit it's going to generate, how much time you're going to have and the flexibility and the freedoms that your business should be delivering for you. But what we find is that there's a disconnect because the, the business you have now is not that ideal business. You're working too many hours. You're not making the profit you want. Um, you're working with people that you don't enjoy working with. You haven't had a holiday. Okay, you're having trouble finding staff or you've got staffing issues, all of those things. And they create stress. They create a lot of stress, not just in the business, but they create financial stress for you personally. They create some stress in your families because you're having to work those extra hours, okay? And you're tired and you're not actually spending time engaging with your families or, or enjoying them or supporting them. Um, often the business stress, the financial stress leads to physical illnesses, 
whether that's mental health or, or even just the fact that you're too run down, your body is, is not coping and you, you're more susceptible to, to illness. Uh, or you may even have some, you know, heart conditions or, or you know, those kinds of issues um, and are something that we want to avoid. So when your business is unhealthy, we've got an increased risk of these um, stressful, you know, things occurring in your life. And that's going to be a bit of a downward spiral. So often we have a, a small business that's not doing well. It, it, it's unhealthy, but we can't put the finger on it. And um, I liken that to the situation, like a medical situation. So we, we've had some recent situations with some family members who have been ill. And at, you know, when we haven't known what the issue is, there's been a lot of concern and, and a lot of, uh, I guess, frustration and panic because we don't know what to do to fix the situation or what needs to be done. And uh, often that's uh, the case where you don't actually go and find out. You know, you just persist and think that you'll get through it, but there may actually be a, a bigger underlying issue that you need to address and, and um, yeah, you know, regular check-ins with your medical practitioner, your, your GP, are recommended for that reason but um, when there's symptoms of an illness if you don't identify what's causing them it tends to cause more stress and more more illness okay because you're more concerned and then yeah you know, everything it's, it's a bit of a downward spiral once you've got that one issue or one illness or sim or health issue it causes seems to cause more down the track and then that becomes a bit harder to identify what the real issue is um, but when you identify that real issue when 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 the testing is there and it discovers what the real issue is it can be fixed and often when you fix that that underlying issue a lot of the other symptoms a lot of the other issues that you're encountering um, they they are dealt with as a as a, a side effect of, of actually dealing with the real issue, the real underlying issue. And, and, and unfortunately, um, you know, with, with our family, um, that was the case. We were able to identify what the real issue was. And since that's been addressed, the, the ongoing issues have been um, relieved, much, much to the uh, delight of, of the whole family, and particularly that family member who was um, uh, afflicted at the time. So uh, same sort of thing happens with your business, though. Like, and it's a similar process that we use in in our business in identifying what needs to be done to help clients address their financial health for their business or the business health in general. Um, and we liken it to that medical triage or medical emergency process where we actually need to work out what's going on. You know, what are what are the obvious injuries and symptoms of your business and the, and the poor health? And look, we've got a pretty good or I'll say we've got a very good understanding of what those symptoms are and, and what the implications are um, but generally we go through that process and we don't just jump to the conclusion and say how oh, are you having a problem with cash flow you need to do xyz that, that you know your problem with cash flow could be a symptom of many different things so we'll actually delve into what are the real issues in your business is it a case of you know not enough sales or sales that are uh, that are unprofitable or overspending or you've got just too many resources that you're funding too many um, too many outgoings there, there could be many causes of poor cash flow so we would as part of this i guess triage or medical uh, emergency process we'll identify what the symptoms are and we'll try and get to the real cause of what is causing those symptoms what is actually causing the bleeding what's causing the pain and once we've identified those most critical areas, you know, when, when we identify the real issues in your business, um, then we can identify what's going to happen um, or what needs to happen to work on that. To, firstly, to address the real issue, the immediate issues to stop the hemorrhage, um, not just repair the damage, but then how after we've repaired it, how can we create a stronger and healthier business um, so working with you. So we generally take this seven step process and, and these are seven steps that you should take in your business as well is the first step is we need to stop the bleeding. Okay. It's hard to treat an injury when it, when the blood's there, you, you, you need to stop the bleeding if you can. So how do we stop the bleeding? And then we've got to stop some of those damaging behaviors. Okay. Um, you know, it's not uncommon to see somebody get injured, particularly like in the sporting field, and they persist with continuing in the game. They don't stop. 
okay so, and by persisting in the game they actually do more damage and more longer term damage and you, you see that happen whereas if somebody had come off the field and um, addressed it they might have a, a minimal time away from the game but by persisting in the in the heat of that that moment they've actually created more damage they've done more damage to that injury so we need to stop those damaging behaviors right there and then and then step three is we do a clean and repair we need to clean up the the mess and do some repair work and that might be stitching might be removing could be a case of some some pretty heavy um, surgery needs to be done on your business but we'll actually have a look at what needs to be done one of the actions that need to be taken to clean up the mess and repair the immediate damage um, okay and that, that's not going to be a full re full recovery straight away because you know um, let's say let's say a major cut and you got a lot of bleeding it's not the, 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 the wound is not going to heal instantly. We need to firstly clean it up, address it, make sure there's no ongoing infections, and, and then it'll heal over time. And But we need to monitor that because, you know, we need to monitor that the recovery is actually occurring the way that it should, uh, that's intended, that you are actually following that treatment plan in your business. And Because if you're not going to follow the plan, then, then you're – the speed of your recovery and the strength of your recovery are going to be inhibited. You're not going to recover as strongly if you don't follow the plan to, to, to improve your business. And then once we go from that recovery, we then start to go into rehabilitating those behaviors. So there were behaviors that caused your business to get into that situation at, at, that it was, a, was in when the health was so bad. Okay. So there are behaviors that you would have, you know, maybe they've just developed over time that you're doing in your business that are not great. Okay, and they need to change. So we need to uh, take that corrective action and retrain your business muscles. We re need to retrain your business processes, the muscles and those habitual um, actions that you're taking and, and put you on a, a more um, productive, more profitable, uh, more successful out, um, course. And to do that, that's going to take some work and it takes time as well. And then once we've corrected those behaviors, then we can start to build on strengthening your business, that strength training program, okay? Because you're not going to go from uh, having a broken leg to running a marathon the next week, okay? We need to work on how we're going to train you for that marathon, okay? And look, yeah, a business could be a series of sprints, but in reality is you're in your business for the long term. Most people are in their business for uh, or would like to be in their business for 10, 20, 30 years, okay, and grow something valuable that they can fund their retirement with. Um, so we're looking at that long-term strategy. So building the strength so that you can endure, so that you can be successful and, and go through um, profitably, grow your business and be able to, um, I guess, um, survive through those hard times, but not just survive through them, but still be profitable and sustainable in those hard times, which are going to come again. We're going to have it whether, no matter what it looks like, whether it could be financial or health or, uh, or physical disasters, um, there will be something that will happen in the future. It's, it's pretty much a certainty, but we need to make sure our business is in its best possible physical uh, shape um, so that can withstand those um, those uh, issues in the future. So what we have is that most businesses, and we looked at those statistics early on, and they were pretty scary statistics really, and I, I'm hoping that we'll see um, you know, an improvement in those and that in the future years when we're looking back at these statistics, that's you know those, those percentage of business owners not earning enough wage or even earning average wage. And look, let's be honest, average wage is quite low um, for a business owner. To, to be making so we want to see those statistics improve that um, very few if not no business owner is earning less than they would if they went and got an, got an average paying job so we want to work on creating healthier businesses and it starts today it starts today so if you're not sure about um, where you're at it, it's worth having that checkup because there are, there are underlying issues we often hear about um, you know somebody that had um, you know, they've, suddenly they've got this medical issue, but if they'd actually gone and done that, that routine testing, that routine um, checkup years ago, you know, they put it off because they didn't think they needed to. If they do that routine testing and, and that they, they can prevent those issues or identify them early on and they can be treated correctly at the right time. Um, so we need to make a decision to, to look at closely the health of our business today 
and what can we improve? What, what, what can improve and what do we need to do? What's our plan going to be? What's our seven step treatment plan need to be for our business? You know, it may be that it's just minor improvements in, in your lifestyle. It might be, you know, changes to your business diet, changes to, um, your exercise routine or your strength building routine for your business. But there may be some changes that will improve the profitability and the sustainability of your business over time, which will lead to a better, healthier, stronger business. And have better, healthier, healthier, stronger business means a better, healthier, stronger you. And that's what it's about. You know, you go into business, you create a business to support your lifestyle. Okay, you go into business to create uh, the freedoms that you need in your business. Your business should be there to support you. But we find it's often the other way around. So we need to um, take a decision to act now. Find out what is needing improvement, what needs treating in our business, and act on it. Implement that treatment plan. So uh, where do you get started? Well, one of the places we start is with a full diagnostic of your business. Um, we can do that full diagnostic. So we have a, a diagnostic, which I'm going to make available to our listeners. Um, the link to that will be in the show notes. Now, part of that diagnostic will be that you'll answer a series of questions looking at some of the key areas of your business and the business health. And we'll then send you a free report, which highlights the areas of most um, need, um, need that most need to be addressed. And also some, um, you know, some tips and uh, suggestions on what you might be able to do to improve those areas. And that's a starting point. And then, you know, once you've got that starting point, you might like to say, well, hang on, we need some more help. And how do we do that? And look, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about how we can help you grow your business. But look, if you do nothing else, um, I encourage you to um, take the decision and find out what's going on in your business now and what could be improved to make a healthier, stronger business. So we're about having a strong business, about revitalizing your business, and it starts today. So take the decision, use the diagnostic, and we'll give you the free report. I'll give, send you the free report, um, which will help you with um, identifying some of the areas that you can improve your business. And then that's the next step to go, but you need to implement and be um, you know, diligent in following your treatment plan and have that grow, grow that stronger, um, more profitable business. Uh, that's going to be healthy and resilient. And that's what we want. We want strong, healthy, resilient businesses. So thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for listening to the business behind your business. And we're here to have the conversations to help your business grow and thrive. And not just your business, but if you know a business owner that could benefit from some of the conversations we have, um, then please share the podcast with them. Uh, and it's available on all uh, the podcast applications. Um, so wherever you listen to your podcast, that's where it's available. It's also available on, on YouTube and you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Um, so you'll see the full, um, the full video, the full, full, full podcast and, and some of the extras that we will show share on the, on there from time to time. We'll also share extra resources um, on our website. So the business behind your business.com. So if you go there and, and check out the resources and, the, and some of the extra articles and features that we've got available for our listeners, um, please do that. So we're looking forward to uh, some more conversations coming up. We've got some great guests lined up and love to hear from you. So uh, please get in contact with us with any suggestions or questions that you have or, or ideas for future conversations. I um, want you to grow a great, thriving, prosperous business 